Hi, sup. <laughs> <laughs> so my trading contract starts in two weeks uh do i look like a trading solicitor right now i really don't <laughs> i mean if you were a client right now would you even take me seriously i think not wait 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 if a client is watching this wait 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 let me get serious let me get serious i am i'm gonna be a trading solicitor trust me remember i am serious i do want to have a proper chat today guys about the fact that my training contract is starting in two weeks but first let me check my hairs okay one sec right so there's a few things that i want to talk about in today's video my training contract is starting in two weeks or like less than two weeks now by the time this video comes out it'll probably be less than two weeks i want to talk a little bit about what's happening next for me i want to talk a little bit about my fears uh, some concerns that i have i want to talk a little bit about advice that i've been given by other solicitors currently or trainee solicitors in the field yeah just a bit of a informal chat today for my channel so let's start off with what's happening next for me in my career. So obviously my training contract, as I've literally mentioned like probably five times in this video, my training contract starts in like less than two weeks. So the first week of my training contract, I'm on an induction. So during this induction, we have to do the professional skills course. Yes, I think that's probably the last exam I'll ever have to do in my life. So I'm very, very looking forward to that. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm so done with academia and just doing exams and sitting in time conditions and the invigilator saying five minutes left. Like I, I just can't. I just don't want to do and listen to that. I'm really, really looking forward to getting that done. Some thoughts on the PSC that I've heard. Some people that I've heard say it's quite manageable. Um, some people say it's hard, but it's okay. It's easier than the LPC, but it needs to be done. Yeah, I guess we'll just wait and see. I'm, is it professional skills course? Yeah, I am saying it right. <laughs> If I imagine if I was like PCS or something, I would have got it completely wrong. Yeah, if there is anyone watching who has done the PSC, just drop it in the comments below. Any advice? I have come across some Instagram pages that, you know, have done posts about the PSC as well, which I definitely need to look at. So after my one week induction, usually this induction is, uh, we usually go down to the firm's office in Newcastle, but that would have been so live. But obviously because it's the pandemic, we can't do that. So we're doing it all remotely. I'm sure the firm will put in measures in place to ensure that we're still meeting other trainees in the cohort and then after that one week induction i start in my seat for those of you who don't know a seat is your department in the training contract some firms do a six seat structure so you sit in six departments before you qualify my firm does it a four seat structure so i sit in four seats each lasting six months long until i qualify as a solicitor i don't know what my first seat is going to be yet seat options come out very very soon they might even come out this week if i'm honest with you but of course i'll let you guys know what happens with that in terms of how i feel about seat options I'm quite flexible about which area I'm in first. They asked us as well, you know, whether we had any preferences. In that section, I just said not, not applicable. I don't really have any. Mainly because I literally, I'm quite open to what area of law I want to go into. I always knew I wanted to go down the commercial law route. But within that route, I guess I'm quite flexible. There were certain topics here and there which I really did not like on the LPC. But there were also topics that I really did like on the LPC. For example, I really didn't like private client, but I really did like real estate. So if I was put in a private client seat, for example, I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. I don't think there is any kind of scope for changing it either. So I guess I'll just have to kind of suck it up and go with it, which is completely fine because there were instances in the past where I didn't like a particular practice area when I was studying it. But when I did it on the LPC, or when I did it as a paralegal, it completely changed my mind. So I'm quite open to that prospect of getting my mind changed. And yes, I'm also going to be working remotely. So for the first six months of our training contract, I will probably be working from home. And the firm have sent through their laptop and a mic and stuff like that and i'm going to be starting to order in like monitors and stuff like that imagine if i unbox my laptop like influencers unboxing their like promo stuff that would be so jokes hmm. oh my god like guys it's here it's here my laptop that my firm have really kindly gifted to me hashtag gifted they've really gifted me this lovely laptop and i'm so honored to unbox it with you guys today so it's a really lovely fabric uh kind of bag um really nice zippers there we love that really good kind of compartmental space really good for storage and stuff oh look at that you can put your pens and phone and stuff in there as well so really looking um 
like a really fancy bag. And then, of course, we are going to unbox the main thing itself. I'm so excited, guys, I'm so excited. So what we have in here, oh my God. Oh, they don't have to do this. They don't have to. Do this. Right, so in here we have my brand new laptop. Um, it's a ThinkPad, really nice. Oh my God, it's Windows, Windows. And let, let's open it up. Okay, oh my God. Our Intel Core i7 processor, really lovely. And yeah, Lenovo, oh, it's so sleek. It's got such a sleek design, nice little webcam. Oh, it's got a little slider thing. So my FBI agent can't me, you know what I'm saying? So I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, let's see what else is in the bag. So if you guys are really interested in purchasing this corporate package, do look at my promo code, look at me, I'm popular21 for further details and do type that code in at the checkout. One thing that I am really, really preparing for physically is the fact that I am going to be working from home. Now, I was watching this TED talk recently. If I find the link for it, I'll drop it in the description below. And essentially, it was a TED talk where this person was saying why we can't switch off from work. And this is something that I do really struggle with, even with my channel and just extra stuff that I do. I find it really difficult to sleep at night at times because my mind is literally just worrying and worrying and worrying about all these different things. And I get so many different like new ideas for content content or new ideas for just like my future and like career progression what I want to do so I am someone who really struggles with that switching off element and I do work at like really kind of unsocial hours sometimes like even like into my evenings which isn't healthy and it is something that I am looking to improve and then one thing that I'm really worried about with my training contract is that I'm working from home so work and home have already been combined for me with the fact that like I do my YouTube channel and stuff like that but it's going to become even more combined now that I'm doing kind of remote working and stuff like that one thing that this guy suggested in the TED talk was to kind of have separate zones in your house for separate things and even just James Clear talks about this in his book Atomic Habits where he says designate separate zones for that habit so if you want to get into the habit of working more designate a special room in your house that's only for working if you want to do a special room that's for content creation do it for that if you want a special room that's for when you want to watch tv or when you want to chill out you can have your living room that kind of thing so I've started to kind of implement this into my house as well so one thing that I really want to do is obviously use my bedroom for like sleeping and relaxing and like Netflix and stuff like that. What I want to do for content creation, but also more so now for my training contract, is convert a bit of my brother's room into a like mini office. And it's only a part of his room. And you might be thinking, Sim, like, what the hell are you doing? Like taking your brother's room. He's at uni right now, so and the lighting in that room is really good. And also just because the room right now is like this really kind of apple green, I really don't like that color at all. So we're just repainting it. Hopefully, I'm getting new office equipment as well. So I'm going to order in some monitors, a new kind of ergonomic chair, get some new kind of like home office decor so i've been watching a lot of youtube videos about that including obviously ali abdal's productivity setup which i definitely cannot afford at this current stage in my life but as a fellow lawyer in the youtubing community i've been looking at liam porritt's productivity desk setup that i'll link in the video description below there are a few things that he mentioned in that video that <laughs> some of them were really kind of extortionate like 160 for a keyboard i could hear the pain in his voice as well when he was literally talking about like purchasing that keyboard but i, I think it was really good to watch that video from a lawyer's perspective what did he feel like he needed for his office i might do a separate video about kind of how i created my home office from start to finish like a before and after so if you are interested in that do stay tuned i'm only going to show it though if it looks good if it looks crap like, why would i do a vlog about that like another thing that i've been doing to kind of prepare myself for the legal field because i have been outside of the legal field for some some time even though i have been creating content about law about careers stuff like that i haven't actually had formal work experience in in a law firm since September. So to kind of remind myself about certain things in the office and just gain those practical insights, I've been reading Jake Shogger's TC handbook and I've also been reading The Legal Insider edited by Matthew Berwick. So I'll tag both of those in the video description as well. And the final thing I'm doing to prepare for my training contract, I'm doing my eyebrows and my nails again. <laughs> I definitely need to do them properly before I start. Yeah, very important. Oh, my leg hurts, Jesus. Ow. 
this is more serious element perhaps of this video and it's more so about my fears i want to kind of be as open and transparent as i can with you guys about how i'm feeling with my training contract starting do i have any concerns or fears before i start and i guess one of my biggest fears i know this might sound really really dumb but what if i don't like commercial law and i know you might be thinking sim like what the hell like you've obviously answered that in your questions you obviously show those transferable skills and it's true like i know from an outsider's perspective i know that i have those transferable skills that would help in a commercial law career i also know that elements of my personality suit towards becoming a commercial lawyer elements such as being encouraged to speak to people being encouraged to network i enjoy those elements but also client contact is something that i really really like i like meeting new people i like helping people out i like solving issues using problem solving skills so all of those elements yes like you know i do understand that in some respects from an outsider's perspective i will enjoy commercial law in that respect however another thought that i've been having in the back of my head and i'm not sure whether this is like a what if thought or you know you know whatever but essentially what if i actually don't like it you know <laughs> i know that sounds so dumb but like you never really know what it's like to be a trainee solicitor or a solicitor until you actually become one and i feel like you can say that for any career and i think another reason why this fear has kind of it's not really a fear as such it's more just a kind of really really back of my mind niggling kind of thought where it's like i've had an experience before where i didn't enjoy my career and that was when i was in accounting even though the culture and the firm and the people were really lovely the actual job itself really really did did not appeal to me in any way and I've experienced that element of going to work every day waking up every morning and not feeling fulfilled about what you do as a day job so I've had that feeling before and I just really really hope it doesn't happen again when I'm a commercial lawyer when I'm doing my training contract another thing I'm kind of worried about is the workload and time management for you guys who do know me if you do follow my content what I do on Instagram I do a lot of stuff just outside of my career and like my main job i obviously create videos on here i review applications i mentor informally mental loads of different people and what i mean by that is whenever people have a concern or a question i do get a lot of messages of people asking me for advice and that's on linkedin that's on instagram so if you have messaged me by the way and i've taken ages to reply it's because of that i do get quite a few messages come in and you know there are actually times in the week where i have to dedicate an hour or two just to reply to everyone so there's that element as well and there's also just like you know just social life and personal life and family life i've got a lot of those kind of things going on as well and then on top of that now i've got my main kind of training contract job which for me is the main thing that i have to prioritize right now i can't let all these other things tip the scales that it affects my my productivity at work that it affects the quality of the work that i produce so one of my biggest fears is you know what if i just can't do them all i know that sounds weird but like there may have to be a situation for example in the future where one of those extra things that i do may have to stop like i can't do that anymore because i just don't have the time like last week for example i i published around four videos on youtube in that week and this week i'm aiming to do the same so four videos hopefully this week as well and I can't do that when I'm on my training contract and I know that that's not realistic I'm only able to do that right now because I have a little bit more free time but when I've got it's not even going to be a nine to five let's be real it's probably going to be an 8 45 to 7 or an 8 45 a.m start to like a 6 p.m finish that kind of thing so a lot of hours in my day are gone towards work where I could be doing YouTube instead so maybe the number of videos I do a week may, may decrease or you know like my reply times get even more atrocious I don't know I don't know and I think how I'm going to all this fear is literally just play it by ear and see i know there is still a lot more that i need to do to manage my time effectively i'm waking up way too late right now like i'm literally rolling out of bed at nine and that's when work is supposed to start so i am trying to kind of rejig my sleep cycle as well so i can sleep earlier and wake up earlier as well I'm, aim I'm aiming to wake up around like seven so i think that's a decent time so in that time i can like you know go for a walk if i want to or do other things before i actually start working not just roll out of bed straight away and turn on zoom i don't really have any specific fears or concerns about my firm i think the main reason for that is because i had luckily the choice to pick which firms I wanted a training contract with and I wholeheartedly stand by my decision but also since I accepted that decision the firm has reaffirmed to me over and over that I've made the right choice for example they've 
gone out of their way to contact us. They've gone out of their way to provide support, even though we haven't even formally started our training contract yet. I've also built good relations with people inside the firm, even before I've, I've started, which is really nice. And I think everyone in the firm is genuinely quite supportive and wholesome. I understand that in the workplace, of course, you're going to get times where, you know, there may be clashes in personality, but that's, that's in every workplace. Like you can get that everywhere. And that's something that I have experienced as well before in my previous work experiences. So it's not necessarily something that I'm, I'm fearful of it happens so yeah I'm not really too worried about that aspect another kind of like last I wouldn't say this is a fear it's more just a, a concern but also something that I'm going to look out for is I've been monitoring kind of diversity and inclusion in the legal sphere from a very outsider perspective so now I'm formally kind of entering the legal career so I would be really really interested in seeing how diversity and inclusion plays out in the legal field I just really hope I'm not disappointed by what I see I have a feeling there will be instances not with my firm in general but literally just I'm just talking about like the legal profession just as a whole like all the firms involved in the UK I just hope that I'm not disappointed by instances where DNI just is swept under the carpet, I guess. That's one thing that I am really kind of, I am going to look out for and I'm going to be open and transparent about because it is something that I really do feel invested in and passionate about. So to alleviate my fears and my concerns about my incoming training contract, one thing that I did, and I think this is really the power of networking and building your connections, was I reached out to individuals who were trainee solicitors of firms, who are current solicitors, a newly qualified solicitors, and asked them about their training contract experiences and whether they were able to provide any advice that they wish they had before they started. And for those of you who are future trainees watching this right now, I thought it'd be nice to share with you guys so we can all try and get to the best start as we can. So here are some things that I've been told. Firstly, I've been told that taking initiative is absolutely key. So for example, one way in which you can do this before you are given a new case, for example, taking the initiative to actually read about the client's objectives, read around that area of law, that kind of thing is something that teams want to see. And even for if you're starting a new seat, for example, researching it on practical law, trying to gain an insight about key terms in that practice area. So then when you enter to the seat and the partner for example mentioned something you were like oh yeah that's this this and this so you're able to kind of show that you're smart as well by taking initiative and one thing that's been mentioned quite often to me is if you have a question about something don't be afraid to ask it however there are ways of asking someone so if you are going to ask someone and you're constantly pestering them like every five minutes oh, I have a question about this I have a question about this I have a question about this like that's interrupting their workflow so one thing that I've been advised is if you have a question try and uh, build a list of questions that you may have about the task and depending on the managing style of your partner or your supervisor or whoever's assigned you the task and then ask them that questions all in one go and also one thing on the note of questions that I've heard as well is if you have a question about something rather than going to someone and being like I don't know about this try and perhaps research it before Re try and research the answer or, and then go to the partner and the supervisor and say look this is what I think about this particular question is this correct or am I going around it the completely wrong way or is there anywhere else where I can look to find this information? So I think the thing is lawyers don't want you to go to them with no answer. I think that's what I've kind of gained the impression of. I think they want you to go to them with potential solutions and actually looking like you've made an effort to try and find the answer yourself and a big thing that came up as well is transparency so being transparent about your capacity and not just being a yes man to every single task that you gain for example if you do say yes to every single task uh, that you have been assigned to then it means that sometimes you have difficulty with doing every single task uh, to the best of your ability because you're rushing because you're under pressure that kind of thing so obviously there's a bit of a fine line you don't want to say no to a lot of tasks but you don't want to say yes to every single one either I think that's definitely something that I'm a bit worried about and I think I'll definitely kind of see how I tackle that because I, d I will definitely get a situation where for example I'm at full capacity and someone else says oh can you do another task I'm definitely going to look out for that and see how I react in that situation. Another thing about transparency that I've heard quite often from the advice that I've been provided is if you mess up, own up to it and let them know. <laughs> I think the, one of the things that was really, really stressed to me is if you mess up and you just hide it, like it could form into an even worse problem. So I, I guess always own up to when you've messed up, that kind of thing um, is another thing that was quite 
emphasized to me uh, from the individuals who provided me advice. Another thing that I've heard is building good habits early. So this is in respect of time management, uh, managing your emails, that kind of thing. And also keeping up to date with the SRA records and stuff about, about your tasks and what you did, just to ensure that you are fulfilling that requirement from the SRA as well. I think I've touched upon this point before about management styles. So of course, every team, when you move seats, for example, every individual in that team is going to have a different kind of decision-making style or different kind of team style. For example, you may be with a supervisor, for example, who likes to kind of keep updated on everything that you're doing. Or you might have a supervisor who is literally lets you kind of be a little bit more autonomous and independent and expects feedback or responses about what you're doing at the end of the day, that kind of thing. So I think one thing that I've been told is try and suss out what the personality style of your uh, supervisor or your team is and how they work as a team. Um, so then you're able to kind of adapt to that and fit into that as well. And the last thing I've heard about the training contract process is being social. So getting involved in the CSR element, the social elements, of course, in a remote working situation. Um, that means, of course, attending like Zoom meetings, trainings from other teams and really kind of going out of your way to book coffee sessions, for example, with people in your team. And yeah, really being proactive and ensuring that you're learning from everyone that you meet. That's kind of a good sum up of every piece of advice that everyone has kind of given me about this training contract and you know starting the training contract thank you so much as well if you're watching this and you're one of those individuals who did provide me advice on this i am really really thankful and it has put me in good stead i think for starting my training contract as well and yeah maybe one thing i may do in a couple of years after maybe when i qualify is react back to this video and see whether anything i said was true whether it was actually like that or anything extra maybe i'll do that who knows? See you in two years, future Sim. And yeah, I think that's a good kind of end to this video. It's going to be an interesting journey for sure. And I'm really excited to take you all on the journey with me as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone. See you all in the next video.